Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, let's call for our daily bread before going to today's broadcast. Join me right now wherever you are and make sure you say these words. Say with me, say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, we're talking about God positioning you right and you being prepared for the work of service that God has planned for you. I told you yesterday, everything God is going to do in your life is in fulfillment of prophecy, just like he did in the life of the children of Israel. Before they were born, God spoke concerning them. And saying in 400 years, I will bring them up. But when the time came for God to bring them into the land, God had to look at them critically and say, Can these ones serve me in that land? And their possession of the land was determined based on that. This is one reason prophecies are delayed. People don't understand. It's not because God is unfaithful is because they are not prepared and why can't god prepare me that's what he's been doing all your life praise god yeah that's what he's been doing all your life preparing you but i didn't know that i didn't know that yeah because it's not announced you see what god does he trains you first he shows you grace and then he sets you on the journey. And he expects that you think and meditate. See? So, the children of Israel were brought out of Egypt. And suddenly, God began to feed them with manna. And like God said, it's a food that they didn't know about. They don't know where it came from. They don't understand how it appears. It just shows up. And, and when God was feeding them with this manner, there is one thing he wanted them to understand. That bread is never your problem. So don't live your life seeking bread. That's what God will say to them. See, you wake up every morning, food is there. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, as I speak now, I'm just a, a lot's just coming to my spirit. A lot's just come into my spirit. You know, we, we can appropriate these thoughts in every facet of life. Everything we do, our children, uh, employment, everything we do. God's mind was this. I want you to serve me. But first and foremost, I want to check what is in your heart. So, I lead you in a path and... On that part, I show you certain things. I show you I can take care of you. I show you I can feed you. I show you I can defend you. Now, all these things I'm doing is to give you a mindset. I told you, the ultimate of every work of God in your life is that he will mirror himself. He will see himself. That's the ultimate. That's, that's, that's the, the, the end to every work God is doing in your life. So if you are not reflecting God progressively in your life, it also already tells that you're failing. That God uses different people in, for different reasons. Remember, even Judas, Judas Iscariot was used. Understand? So it's not just about being used. It's about being used for the good things and then ultimately being chosen for blessing. Now, so God calls you. He trains you. How does he train you? He shows you his hand. You see miracles. You see things happen. But does it come to your mind? Because all those miracles you see, they are to prepare you for the service. They are to prepare you for the work. So you, you are here and you're, you're trusting God for money. And then suddenly somebody calls you like, Hey, God said I should give you this money. And, oh wow, now you're excited. Do you know I was believing God for money and somebody just called me and said God called me. Now, 
you, you may be excited and lose the essence of that miracle. It's a miracle quite all right. You rejoice quite all right. But you see, you may just get carried away and forget the essence of that miracle. I'll never forget the very first day someone walked up to me, oh dear Lord Jesus. You know, even as I say it now, I mean, I just feel that and now it's in, you know, come over me. The very first day someone walked up to me and said, God said he should give me money. Many years ago, I was a student there. So dramatic. I had traveled all night without a dime now because of a covenant I had with the Lord. I had traveled all night without money. I got into um, my school town about 5 a.m. So I got into my room. Nobody knew I was around because there was no GSM there. <laughs> so nobody knew I was around. I was just there. And then about 9 a.m. that same morning, there was a knock on my door. I opened because this brother and we just, oh, you're around. Yeah, I just came in this morning. Oh, wow, you traveled in it. Yeah, I did travel in it. You know, and we talked and talked. And then he said, well, last night, the Lord spoke to me that I should bring this to you. And I received that. Thanked him. We prayed together. And then he left. When he left, I opened the envelope and I saw five thousand men. Now he was a student like me. I saw five thousand men. I remembered his words. He said, God told me last night. Now that last night I was busy traveling and I'm wondering, oh God, what's going to happen? <laughs> what's going to happen to me now? You know, that's what I was thinking. Every moment I'm awake, I'm just thinking, I'm going to arrive school with nothing. What's going to happen to me now? So I sat down and I began to meditate on what just happened. And, I, and that's what I do. I, I look at every aspect of it. Now you should do that also because that is how you imbibe the training of truth. Yes, I received money. Whoopee! I mean, wonderful. You understand what I'm saying? But you see, that was not the exciting part. I sat down and I began to meditate on this. I said, hey, while I was traveling through the night, God spoke to someone in the point of my destination, at the point of my destination, and commanded the person to come give me more. And the person obeyed. I said to myself that I actually knelt down that day and I said, Lord, I will never disobey you for any assignment that you give to me. I knelt down that day. I said, Lord, even if you tell me grown into this hole, I'm going to do it. Why? Because I realized that day that not only does he love me, but you see, he knows how to get things across to me. So why should I worry? <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. I mean, if I had gotten to school and, and maybe the next day or something, met someone and said, oh, you know, your, your dad said he's sending you money. That would have been your big, I mean, praise God. But you see, right where I was traveling to and worried or concerned, what's going to happen because i was expecting a miracle and then here comes this person i said to him, you know who to say you know that was the first time that was happening to me so you can understand but see i gave serious thoughts to these things and i made up my mind that day i will never be afraid again where these things are not. and it's been so tough thousands of miracles like that right now. See, now, that's what God expects. Now, imagine afterwards, and now God is telling me to go do something, and I sit down and say, hey, where am I going to get the money from? Oh, God, see, uh, what do I do now? How do I raise money? How do I do this? How do I? Now, it's going to show, I'm going to be showing to the Lord 
that that experience I had was useless. You understand what I'm saying? It's useless. So everything God does in your life, it is to prepare you. But you have to show before the Lord that you are smart. Smart in what? To look at his works and you know what I'm saying? Give thanks. Oh, Father, thank you. Ah, oh, I just received money. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's not really how you give thanks. Giving thanks means meditating on his works and seeing his beauty in everything that he's doing. And you appreciate every detail of it. Now that's how you, you just conclude that this is God. <laughs> it's God. Yeah. It's God. And you know what that means? I can trust him again. You know what that means? Even this money I just received, I can just give it away. And I know he, he, he I, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. He will take care of me. There are people who enjoy miracles, but yet their intelligence have not grown to accept those miracles. You, you meet them, for example, and say, hey, wow. I, I notice God, it's God, though. It's God. But you know, you know, so he's jobless. But then he's never been behind in his bills. He's never been behind in anything. For some reason, when it's time to pay those bills, something just happens. And then, now do you know that person, seeing all those miracles, can still be, oh God, thank you. Yes. <laughs> just give me a job so that at least I know at the end of the month, I, I know what I'll be getting. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying getting a job is wrong, but see, now he hasn't learned what the Lord is trying to teach him. And such a person might be in the same position for a very long time. Now, you know what we're talking about. Don't, 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 don't struggle with what we're talking about. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. So God, takes you on this journey and you look at 400 years I mean he should be more than in those 400 years other nations have been built other nations have grown but you see he brought them out and he was not in a hurry to get them to start building that nation that he desired and guess what he's still talking about the nation of Israel now. he still took them through long parts you know they, they will sin against him say okay you're not ready yet he brings them under the reign of another king and that one comes and plunder the whole nation and like, oh God. And then at the end of it all the present day Israel that is still in fulfillment of God's word came to establishment I think in 1947 God still fulfilled his word and he's still building them up now think about it after being in captivity 400 years he was still not in a hurry to form a nation out of them rather he was concerned about them fulfilling his will and his purpose and i'll tell you the truth the present day israel if they don't fix themselves and align themselves to fulfill his purpose, he, he is still going to turn the tables around again. Why? Because they belong to him. <laughs> that, that's what we, they are in his hands. They are in his hands. Listen, this is what it is. So when you pray, God, I want to serve you. I want to walk with you. I want to love you. Oh God, take care of me. He'll take care of you. But you see, you have to get into that place also where only Him dictates for your life. And that's where the challenge is for a lot of people. Praise God. Our time is up today. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. And I pray that the Spirit of God will truly open. Because what I'm sharing with you is deeper than words can express. But I ask the Lord to give you understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
I'll see you tomorrow.